people have to confront their biases. People have to understand that. It was that kind of questioning that led to the change in the way that we refer to this event in history. Hard history is just a whole bunch of stuff that happened that we don't necessarily want to talk about. It's uncomfortable, it makes us embarrassed or ashamed, or it's horrifying, or, you know, it's a whole lot of reasons why that history might be hard. So teaching hard history is about being able to read the words on the page, but being able to create a safe space in my classroom where we can talk about it, where, um, where we can know that we got to deal with this or else it's not ever going to change. So we have to be in a safe space where we can um, share and, and again, work on our own growth. People have to confront their biases. People have to understand that the world in which we live is the product of historical practices, which may and most likely are unjust towards certain groups of people and recognizing that some people are beneficiaries of that is grappling with the, the hard facts of what it is to live in today's society. It still happens, it continues to happen and continues to drive a deeper and deeper chasm between people who think one thing and people who think another thing. It could describe an event, the same event that happened on the same day and using different language can make it sound like something heroic and wonderful. Using different language to describe the same event can make it sound awful and evil and horrible people. And, and teaching students how to uh, discern the difference and make meaning out of two different pieces that describe the same event gives students uh, you know, the strength and the skill to be able to make sense of what they see happening out in the world all the time. That's kind of the whole point of English is to have students build their knowledge through their reading and their experience. And by making sense and making meaning of things, they should question the author because authors are just people and people are full of bias. And learning to recognize that is a key part of studying literature. We. Uh, can look at tone and diction and look at the way um, two different authors perhaps present the you know an account of the same event and that can tell us a lot. And understanding how setting and time and place create the the backdrop in which a work of literature is created. It's imperative that we teach students to look at authors, question, and push against a status quo. It was that kind of questioning that led to the change in the way that we refer to this event in history, right? Because it was called forever, it was called the Tulsa Race Riot. And the more we studied about it and thought about it and people said, mm, riot implies two sides and this was more one-sided and that conversation grew out of questioning an author, right? Questioning several authors and turned into, that's not what we call it anymore. I mean, literature is not just about saying, I read a book and it was a good story. It's about, I've learned something and understood something about the human condition and I could be better for it.